my talk will be divided into uh, two parts, main parts. Uh, first, I will uh, uh, try to uh, explain the motivation of uh, our studies, uh, and um, I would like to invite you to think uh, uh, somewhere uh, beyond the currently existing uh, BCI technologies and to try to understand what else we can get from uh, BCI uh, beyond the existing possibilities. So uh, if we uh, look at what, what kind of uh, limitations are typical for BCIs, and it is not uh, related only to uh, non-invasive BCIs, but uh, also to invasives as well. Uh, so um, the, this is a scheme of uh, Jonathan Volpo, is very helpful in this. So when we see what we're doing with, uh, uh, when we make some usual actions, with uh, our system, motor system, and uh, we all have not only cortex, uh, which controls our movements, but many other structures uh, between it and muscles. The um, motor neurons in, uh, in spinal cord and uh, cerebellum and many supracortical structures in the brain. And uh, in the BCI, we have a very different situation. So BCI is a typically connected to cortex. And uh, if we will uh, try to use uh, all these systems uh, uh, up to, some, down to spinal cord, it will be not a BCI, um, or it will be very much different BCI. So typically um, we will have these structures and are not included in the um, control of uh, actions. So uh, it will be a limited system, but at the same time, maybe we still cannot, can get some new, uh, something new from this human computer or human machine interaction when we um, attach to cortex. So, um, and uh, I think it's it maybe a bit useful to look what uh, non-experts, uh, the lay public, uh, expect from BCIs, what people usually think about BCI. Uh, so they think that uh, BCI is such a fantastic device, it can uh, directly uh, change our, uh, convert our intentions or wishes into actions without any effort and uh, maybe in some other good fantastic capabilities. But um, if uh, everybody wants to see something like this, maybe, uh, maybe not everybody, but many people, uh, but uh, maybe it, it makes sense to look what we can really get um, from it. So, um, and we uh, look at what actually happens with BCI, and sometimes it's uh, non-invasive BCI, but uh, typically it's more typical for invasive BCI, uh, with much higher accuracy. It's possible to get um, s such a degree of automaticity that a uh, uh, user uh, actually feels that uh, it's, uh, the intentions are converting into actions directly. Uh, and uh, muscles are not used, there is uh, no use of uh, this motor control system, usual, and um, uh, maybe it can, uh, we can get some new mode of action, is it, uh, because we uh, connect our brain to a computer, uh, brain is a powerful uh, device, uh, system, and uh, the computer is also a powerful system, and uh, there are now even uh, some, um, also in general public, some ideas uh, it's expressed by this maybe Elon, Elon Musk that uh, we can uh, make uh, some uh, superpower device by uh, connecting them, but um, there is a bottleneck, the interface between them. Uh, and our mus muscular systems are also is a part of this uh, um, interface, so maybe we, if we get rid of from muscles, maybe it will be something interesting. And um, so the, actually the idea is uh, maybe not as good as it may look like, but um, one uh, thing I think probably it's uh, good to explore uh, is that um, some, for example, creative activities, when we um, sometimes feel constrained with our uh, 
uh, motor system. And um, I think a good example is uh, when we, uh, many of us uh, now, uh, when uh, typing something, um, and especially in communication, uh, we try to avoid a shift key. Uh, we, we don't use uh, capital uh, letters. Uh, uh, they are required by grammatic rules, but we um, feel better not using shift key. It's, it's not very difficult to press shift, but or, um, but anyway, we, uh, it, 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 we feel better not use it. So maybe some uh, action, uh, which is uh, something which is really required by usual motor actions, can be um, somehow uh, avoided. And um, it's, it could be uh, we, we can try to de design such a BCI for uh, studying such uh, interaction. But um, for invasive studies, it's, uh, it, it can be much more efficient uh, way, but uh, there are two serious ethical limitations so far, because they are very risky. And uh, uh, so we uh, maybe try to do something with uh, non-invasive BCI. Uh, uh, but in non-invasive BCI, we typically we think that we are already at limits of its performance, and so how can we do something uh, even better than uh, usual uh, motor performance? But um, let's see that uh, some some possibilities there. So uh, one um, interesting paradoxical uh, approach was proposed very long ago. So m most paradoxical maybe seems that it was more than half a uh, century ago and it was, it was just an abstract and uh, there are some um, also um, anecdotal uh, reports that uh, there was uh, also an experiment by Gray Walter, so he actually performed with uh, some patient. But anyway, um, it was very clearly formulated, it's absolutely very nice. Uh, and um, he even proposed a, a hybrid BCI in this. So it, was, uh, it should be based on two uh, different components uh, of EG, uh, and uh, one is related to ex intention, another to expectancy. But uh, what was uh, most paradoxical in it is that uh, it, uh, it, uh, the use of expectation was uh, in such a way that uh, the user expects that interface will react uh, react to uh, his or her intention and um, this expectation uh, is uh, the source of appearing this e-wave component in EEG and this component can be used for triggering the interface so the user observes that uh, intention creates um, triggering and uh, there will be uh, always some expectation and uh, the interface will work based on just expectation that it will work. And another nice uh, thing is that um, Gray Walter uh, also proposed that uh, it uh, um, highlighted that uh, the system will um, go uh, around the usual effector system. So it will be, um, we will not use the usual motor system, even um, in cortical level it will be quite different. So maybe try to uh, look at this. Um, maybe try to get some new capacities for human-machine interaction. And um, an another uh, approach, it was very, very different, uh, it came from uh, gaze-based interaction. It's uh, not related to EG, basically, uh, at all. Uh, and, um, it, it was uh, found that um, with, uh, if we, uh, the interface is a, a response to a short, for example, short gaze fixations, uh, it's a um, subjective feeling that uh, it will be that our intentions are uh, just uh, uh, immediately translated into action in the computer. Uh, but uh, uh, Robert Jacob, who observed it, uh, in, 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 described this uh, experience in this uh, paper. Uh, he, in the same paper, he um, proposed a principle that is uh, one of the most important in gaze interaction uh, design, uh, the, the Midas touch problem. So the more uh, sensitive is our uh, interface, gaze-based interface, 
uh, the more we have uh, false responses to gaze. So we, we, because our eyes usually move uh, all the time and we cannot control this movement. Uh, and uh, we will make uh, the same uh, gaze fixation, almost this, of the this, this, this same uh, properties. Uh, that uh, looks uh, almost exactly like um, fixation used for control. So we will m make uh, very many false positives. So, and, uh, but it's possible to combine these two approaches. And uh, Torsten Sander, who will make present other uh, presentation today, um, he proposed uh, quite many years ago that um, it, uh, can, we can use um, a passive BCI based on uh, expectation, expectancy wave, uh, EG wave, um, together with gaze um, based control. So, uh, in the case when a user expects that uh, the interface will react to uh, his intention, uh, expressed by gaze, gaze fixation, for example. Uh, in this case, there will be an um, expectancy wave. Um, oh, oh, uh, it also can be uh, called contingent, contingent negative variation, but actually so con contingent classical neg con CNV, contingent negative variation, is a more complex phenomenon. So, uh, and in, in case it is, that it is a spontaneous fixation, there will be no expectation that uh, the interface will respond, so it's possible to see that uh, there will be no E wave. And uh, actually, um, so they made some experiments on this, and uh, they also continued this uh, work, and um, we made it in, in, in a somewhat different way, so uh, we used also um, in the context, this in the context of uh, gaze-based Gaze-controlled gaze games. Uh, so our participants just freely played um, games using their gaze uh, to make uh, some moves in the game. Uh, and uh, we collect in, in this way we collected fixations uh, that um, serve for vision and uh, just spontaneous fixation and fixations which are used to make moves in the game. Uh, uh, and uh, there was a uh, quite uh, good difference in EG. So here is uh, um, in this black line is uh, spontaneous, f uh, the EG in spontaneous fixation, and other are related to intentional uh, fixation, intentionally moved for games, uh, for making moves in the game. Uh, and it was uh, so far we could find this uh, effect in uh, all participants we studied so far, quite m many things now already. Uh, and uh, what we propose to use it, uh, a kind of uh, device which will convert uh, wishes into actions um, and uh, try to uh, make uh, some experiments with uh, uh, online uh, ex interface of this type, but unfortunately um, uh, the classific classification was uh, not so good and we could not get um, such nice results with online um, work of this system. Uh, and we uh, now think about uh, how to uh, use other brain signals, uh, especially MEG, to, together with EG, and uh, then we can um, combine all these uh, principles. So, uh, gaze fixation as a basis of fluent interaction, uh, as also Sanders' proposal to use passive um, BCI to filter out false um, gaze commands, uh, the, the gaze controlled games also, and um, now we'll also use um, MEG. And now something about MEG study. So, uh, okay, that's some technical details. Uh, I think it's better to show how it looks. Uh, so here is um, that um, our part, uh, the picture which was uh, typical for um, in the experiments with our participants. Uh, so we use a game which is, uh, was invented in Russia very long ago called Lines, but typically it's uh, played by um, mouse. So uh, the goal is uh, to put uh, balls of the same color in a line, and um, typically uh, 
uh, a user just clicks at a ball and uh, then clicks on um, uh, some free cell and the ball is moving to this um, cell and so it's possible to move balls uh, on the board. So, uh, and um, in our case, we use a gaze-based control uh, game. Uh, so we um, use gaze fixation. So instead of um, mouse clicks, uh, so fixation should be longer than 500 milliseconds. And uh, in this case, it will be um, some feedback. Uh, for example, here it was uh, uh, results of looking on this ball for 500 or more milliseconds. And then uh, here appears a frame. And uh, if a participant uh, thinks that uh, it's a, a good ball for really for making a move, uh, he also looks at the, what we call a, a confirmation button here. Um, and also there will be some feedback after 500 milliseconds. And uh, then it's possible to move a ball by uh, looking at a free cell. So, um, and of course participants didn't saw the gaze position and we will see it just to understand what's happening. Um, and now I will show how it uh, works. Uh, so the speed was uh, actually higher four times and we'll see now. Um, it, it is a really quite a dynamical game. Uh, the participants enjoyed very much. So sometimes gaze uh, disappears because there are blinks. But um, now, okay, you see there's a confirmation, some feedback there. And um, now participants try to move it here. Yes, it's moving. And then new balls appear, so each uh, move. Um, so um, the position is changing dynamically. So now again, confirmation. Yes, and moving it here. Yeah. Uh, and sometimes uh, uh, fi gaze fixation, uh, which are uh, followed by feedback. Uh, for example, here it will be now. Yes. Um, and, um, but they are not confirmed. So we can collect uh, intentionally used fixation and spontaneous. But actually, there are many methodical details, details in this study because we uh, need to be sure that uh, the participants really was um, going to uh, make a move when he was looking, uh, he or she was looking at the ball. Uh, anyway, we can collect intentional fixations and uh, spontaneous fixations, fixations, which is, um, fixations which are not followed by uh, confirmation and uh, it's clear that there were no intention, probably no intention, because they just look at, at another ball after fixating uh, the first ball. And there were several rules um, we designed to make it uh, more, the data sets more clear, sp of spontaneous and intentional fixations. And we registered MAG. Uh, yes, okay, I will not go to these details. And um, we, we, if we haven't uh, finished the study, um, here are this, um, what can be in the end after we will finish the source analysis. Uh, so we'll have uh, localization of um, the sources which are, uh, show the difference between spontaneous and uh, intentional fixation um, and their time courses. Uh, so MEG actually provides a very uh, nice localization, uh, n not exactly like uh, fMRI, but it's um, comparable. Uh, and, um, but we uh, made already a sensor level analysis. So using linear mixed models, it's very powerful uh, methods, um, statistical methods. Uh, and um, here are just um, um, maps for different types of MEG sensors, magnetometers, gradiometers, uh, two, two type types of gradiometers. And um, they are uh, f shown for different time uh, windows. Uh, and uh, we see that there is, after fixation onset, there is uh, developing uh, activity in different areas. And we can uh, look uh, for time courses um, where the, on the sensor where the changes are most strong. It's like here. And most interesting is that we have a very early onset of this activity, just about the onset, time of onset of um, the fixation. It's quite different from uh, uh, expectation wave in EEG, uh, because uh, in EEG, uh, we, so expectation wave is uh, developing close to the end of the uh, fixation interval. 
Um, but uh, we also see some um, something similar to uh, uh, this e EV wave in um, also MEG, but it's, it's not such strong like this components. So we uh, try to classify now uh, this, this data. So they are um, using uh, Ivan Zuborev, who is also a participant of the conference, will make um, the presentation tomorrow. Um, and he designed a very nice uh, convolutional neural network, um, for, um, so which, which makes possible to decoding MEG signals in a very powerful way. Uh, so far, it's not very uh, high classification um, results, but I think we can improve it further and we'll also use it together with AEG later. So um, the main con conclusion is that uh, we have uh, with MEG some new different components and probably we, together with AEG we could uh, classify it much better. Uh, so we have future plans to going to online classification uh, finally. And um, also I would like to note that we can use this approach of uh, comparing spontaneous and uh, intentional fixation for quite different um, tasks such as uh, studying brain mechanism of intention uh, because um, it's uh, spontaneous fixation are very good control um, condition for uh, intentional uh, actions. And uh, I will not go into details about other studies. Um, we will try to even do some fMRI study of such um, yeah, different uh, spontaneous and um, intentional fixation. Uh, so we'll also have a poster here. You know, unfortunately, Darisi Jao, uh, the main author, will not come because he got ill, uh, unfortunately. And um, so probably I will present this poster. So this is about moving, uh, ob um, selection of moving objects and um, EEG markers of the same type, like we have in static study. Uh, and also at Neurotlon will have um, a very different system, like um, gaze control wheelchair. And in future, we'll try to also uh, search for EEG marker even in uh, such gaze control of such real system. And I would like to thank my um, co-authors co from uh, laboratory, uh, especially Anatoly Vasily, who has um, contributed very much to this MEG study. Uh, and um, our collaborator from MEG Center, they is uh, the only MEG machine in Russia. Um, and very good team uh, there. And Alexey Asadchik, who Talk, uh, have a talk to today, yeah, and I already mentioned Ivan Zuborev, and um, Bogdan Kazirsky will make a talk tomorrow from our lab. Uh, and, um, okay, that's some publications, uh, uh, and uh, I would like to thank you also for attention. <laughs> Maybe some questions? Thank you very much. The question is about the game and the, the actual rules that you applied. For example, mm -hmm. uh, if the gaze, I mean, the man or woman, the participant doesn't make a uh, choice right about, so he has to think about the choice he's making. So how do you apply that uh, in the experiment? Mm. So we, we try to uh, avoid situation when we are not sure if there was uh, any intention or if we are not sure that there were uh, not in, no intention. So uh, any case when there is uh, some, uh, some strange things in strategy or, for example, not fast uh, confirmation, uh, we exclude from analysis. So we try to collect only uh, most clear cases. So it was manually just cleaned up? Uh, not manually, but there were some rules I, I mentioned. There was, uh, so one rule there was that uh, we uh, collected only cases when there was a fast uh, confirmation, for example. If uh, a participant, for example, uh, this was a, some a time diagram uh, here. And um, we see that uh, there are many uh, cases of confirmation soon after uh, looking at the ball and uh, then it's uh, very fast going to the confirmation button. But if uh, there was uh, something different, um, it's possible that uh, a participant was first looking at the, button, uh, the ball, 
And then only then, uh, after the feedback, they decide that uh, they should come from. That probably they didn't have intention in advance. So we, we didn't uh, use uh, such data. Thank you very much. Okay, so I have kind of two related questions. Did you observe any plasticity in learning that subject can improve during playing game? And, okay. uh, Unfortunately, we didn't use, uh, didn't work much with online experiments because in online uh, the system didn't work well. Uh, because for many reasons, because to appear false positives and they try to avoid to look at the same position and so on. Uh, so, and uh, just um, related to experience with uh, EG system, oh, uh, gaze controlled system, uh, so far we didn't uh, notice it. But we didn't make uh, systematic studies. There are some participants from our laboratory who uh, participated many times, but still they have this E wave, but uh, it's not um, increasing. My second question would be could you use it as a biomarker for attention diseases or mental diseases? Yes, yes, it's a good question. I think uh, it makes sense, uh, but um, we're not sure. <laughs> yes, uh, one of the possible applications can be uh, to um, uh, check for cognitive abilities uh, or, or even to try to improve by using this biofeedback based on this marker. Yeah, uh, thank you very much for this great talk. Uh, it's amazing work you presented here. Um, and you mentioned that um, the classification accuracy in online scenarios was not as good, so that you really couldn't use it well in the online scenario. Do you have an idea um, how to improve that, or do you see in a way to really apply that in a meaningful context? Yes, actually, um, we uh, had the idea that if uh, the classification is not uh, high, but basic, basic level of classification, uh, there uh, will be too many false positives because of uh, too, too many overreaction to false positives because uh, they are very annoying. Uh, so f we, now we try to um, put the basic level of classification higher. So there will be not many false positives, and uh, participants will not be scared to uh, fixate, uh, e even if they are not intentionally fixating. Yes, uh, this one. Um, so one possible approach is, is, is that uh, just first try to make classification as uh, just using statistical uh, approaches and using different signals like EEG and MEG together, uh, and um, also to try to, to modify the paradigm slightly, maybe. Uh, and uh, then uh, we, if the system will work and uh, there will be uh, no bad reaction to the feedback, uh, so probably it can be possible even to improve by uh, kind of operant conditioning. Uh, so. mm -hmm. Okay, and do you think that you have seen a quite coherent response of participants? So it was, you know, all participants, uh, participants you saw basically the say, uh, same ERP. Do you think you could do some uh, big data analysis on the combined data of all participants? Uh, no, in online experiments we didn't get uh, sufficient uh, amount of uh, data for more detailed analysis and also we didn't want to continue it because uh, we, we saw that this uh, reaction comes quite uh, quickly to uh, this uh, false positives first and then there is uh, other quite interesting uh, effects which are all, unfortunately are, uh, not good for the experiment but uh, interesting that uh, the participants typically do not uh, react uh, immediately that they are, uh, the interface is um, making a false response because um, they uh, are looking at some position uh, for some reasons for, for a long time. Uh, they are uh, very close to selecting this uh, ball and uh, so they often think that, oh, okay, this interface uh, is not following my intention, um, but uh, maybe it, it is, I had intention. Yes, and they, it, it's very difficult to differentiate. I even felt it my, myself very often that in these experiments that I cannot uh, re quickly recognize that it, this was a false reaction. So when we use uh, not a classifier, but a just a random generator, uh, the, the results were very similar for, for this oh, reason. Right. Yes, because they also uh, look like it's not a false reaction. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs>